Hello and welcome back to Dial Each for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co host, Calden S. This episode, we're talking about some OP kits. We're jumping back to a segment we used to do. We're doing some generic galleries, some, some value corner, and some hidden gems. Ooh, ah. As well as answer some listener questions. This is episode 478. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero Clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like, over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. They gonna be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because it's I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clips is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. We can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clips singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. You can use code DIAL5, D-I-L-5, 5% off your cool stimming order. And if you want to buy it straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order. It doesn't work with pre-orders or iconics. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Burst. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, I did both of them. I did both of them this week. Both of them? Yeah. Both both ordered from, from code ordered from cool stuff oh, oh. ordered from whiz kids cool stuff and whiz kids little, little oh, right cool on. stuff little whiz kids some right stuff do we I get, get do we cool get a no do we get a no what you ordered oh we to wait. you're assuming that i was like cognizant while ordering and didn't just buy oh, things on a whim no uh <laughs> i can say like some of the figures i ordered from cool stuff were just like random generics that they like got back in stock um okay I obviously pre-ordered the, because they weren't on Cool Stuff yet, I pre-ordered the Peacemaker uh, Iconics from WizKids, shop.wizkids.com. Ooh, um, okay. And our code doesn't work on Iconics, but I still pre-ordered them through there. I don't know, I'm assuming the Wings of Eagly one is a little more expensive, like, it's a little more expensive because it might come with more, but the hey, Project think- Butterfly, we've seen, like, sculpts, and yeah. so... Like dancing peacemaker, I'm assuming the butterfly so in the jar cool. and the dude, the main dude that like eats nectar out of his proboscis. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm guessing those are all in that set, but yeah, I I pre-ordered some of those because uh, Iconics have been just selling out. Um, local game stores can't keep them in. Uh, I've kind of like hoped that my local game stores would have Iconics in stock, and like they just keep selling out so i've just you know gone back to uh order from the old online store so yeah 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 dude iconics are awesome i i love what they're doing with the line i'm glad you picked up some that reminds me that i just need to get my pre-orders in because ooh, hot dog i i can't wait that peacemaker set is literally so cool it's gonna be awesome i i love what they're doing with iconics we went crazy about them last week and just the open IP stuff being available, the fact that, oh, so you're saying superhero shows are on the table. We can make, like, Peacemaker. That's freaking super, so freaking cool. Yeah, I love it. I love Iconics. Also, have you looked at the, uh, uh, so part of the... Monkey? The PG, Monkey Man? TGP package? The, oh, the TCB, TCB, TCB package. TCB package? That, yes. Like, so if you're going to Memphis and you're old Grace staying Land. at Graceland, you can get that, that package. Have you looked at the the mimic, the onslaught mimic that like comes out? I I have not. That's like a chest, right? That's yeah, what the mimic is. it's got a I chest. Mean, it, could be, it could be whatever it wants, but big it's old like, teeth. I think this one is like, like a chest. Uh, yeah, gross tongue coming out. Um, I looked at his card, so he's got five health. He's only an eight AC. He's only got two okay, speed, easy. but he has chomp, which is a close attack, and it targets all enemies at range one and automatically hits for one damage. So, ah, kind of a so cool little dude. I assume that's got to be like a thing where, because Mitch said like you can potentially pull a mimic out of like the item bag, right? Right. Yeah. This must be like this is it. Like if you loot the chest, it's like oh, it's a mimic. You know, gets done it on. And, and then if like, there's oh, more than shoot. one person next to it. It just like automatically deals you a damage. Yeah, a little bite. Yeah. A little scary. Um, he also has this is like if you defeat it after the mimic is defeated, the character that defeated it 
secretly looks at the loot pool and draws up to two loot tokens of their Secret choice. Secretly? Yeah. Okay. It was one of the cool things about Onslaught was how secretive it was. It really, yeah, there's a lot of whispering going on in our game. <laughs> kind of weird, but okay. Lots of whispers, yeah. I, I also bought a WizKids product this past this past week. Do you want to guess what it is, Simeon? Ooh. It's not HeroClix. Uh, is it a, a Mimic plush? It, One of the no. plushies. <laughs> No, not bad, a bad guess. I went to old Hobby Town USA down in Lincoln, uh, and they had 50% off for $2.50. I was like, well, how can I not buy it? The My Little Pony Applejack primed HD minis paint ready out of the box by WizKids. Uh, with stickers remember the With stickers included, baby. I was oh, like, yeah. I, actually, I was actually looking at it, and I was like, man, how am I going to paint her eyes to where they don't look haunting? Uh, and there are stickers, so thank goodness there are yeah. stickers. The Transformers also like, came with stickers. Yeah. So it was literally like two Apple Jacks and Starscream, and I was like, man, I bought the second Apple Jack to just paint one and then keep one pristine and gray in package, I guess. Uh, but I went, and I don't know, I'll, I'll maybe paint it. I, I'm excited to put her in my Heroclix tray as a staple, as yet another WizKids product that'll just be on the tray especially when i'm playing my pretty pretty pegasus captain america here in the future <laughs> so what we shall see but uh, that was that was pretty fun uh sorry i didn't buy starscream man remember just back when the whiz kids was like hey we have a partnership with hasbro and everybody was like gi joe transformers hero yeah. Clicks, let's go finally but then it's like yeah so like they make their own board games and they're like oh i guess that makes sense well and like and yeah all... they even announced like we'll be making uh, Transformer miniatures and My Little Pony miniatures, and people were like instantly just, so what's the dial? What's the dial? And I was like, what's hold the on. What's the dial? They didn't say hero clicks. They said miniatures. They make magic yeah, miniatures. Exactly. They make D&D miniatures. Like, they make all kinds of miniatures. So, like, let's just maybe take, and everyone was just, like, frothing at the mouth. Like, they they clearly meant hero clicks. That's the only kind of miniature that they talk about. Yeah, it was it was a pretty tough week month or whatever there's all sorts of people like on facebook or realms being like since they didn't give it a dial and it was like them like chopping the transformer off the base putting it on a hero clicks figure and it's like yeah okay well wasn't gonna have a dial but okay and it's yeah it's a bummer obviously yes i wanted all of these things to be in hero clicks but uh that was not that was not the case but i don't know i, I have it and it's a really neat statue it's it's a fun little little figurine anyways let's go ahead uh what made you happy this last week simeon Ooh, this last week. Uh, so I've been taking my dog to class, getting him to school. Oh, yeah. is he getting his GED finally? Yeah, he's getting his uh, good boy diploma, um, ah, GBD. GBD. Yeah. Uh, so they make you start off, and it makes sense. It makes sense why they do it this way. But it does put me in kind of like a weird position. So they make you start off with like the worst possible like case scenario class for your dog like your dog is unsociable like kind of like class so they make us start off in that class because okay obviously before you can take other classes they have to make sure that you can, can pass that class that class is called the owly growly class because your dog is owly and growly oh, or something you're okay yeah, so all right it's real, it's real cute for a dog that like I don't know, attacks people on the street or something. Um, my dog doesn't do that. He just needs better I social sc skills and uh, better recall and stuff. And so I'm actually entering him in that class so I can pass it, so I can take him to some of the further classes that he'll actually benefit from. But he's been doing extremely well in this class. Um, like some days I'm like, man, I really feel like I don't even need to be here, but... I technically do, so I can go to the other classes because he just he does really well, and uh, okay. I can already see like the differences, like just on recall alone, getting him to like leave the neighbor's cat alone and stuff. It's oh, really easy that's now, good. so that's good. He's been doing a great job, and he's sad every day he doesn't get to go because it's basically just like a one hour. Like one hang on one out time, with other dogs. yeah. We we hang out and we get a ton of treats and we get to do all these like fun commands. He really likes, you know, 
he likes knowing things and he likes you know getting rewarded for knowing things and so feeling smart yeah yeah, it's it's an activity that he just really enjoys and it makes me feel bad because now when i'm at home and i'm not like interacting with him in that way i'm like all right i i guess i'll go make you shake 24 consecutive times even though you don't have any distractions here because our house is quiet so (laughs) i'll have to like start like throwing larry at him while i'm trying to like get him to pay attention don't 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 do that like oh it's a cat he doesn't care about it here cat get over here let me throw you at his dog and then next up is i'm gonna i'm gonna start taking larry to class because she sucks not really. I she's, thought she couldn't go. She can't out she with can't other be, cats. Yeah. Oh, okay. She can't I was be like, near other cats. Yeah. I mean, she can be near them. She just can't. There can't be any like saliva contact. <laughs> right. There can't be any like swapping of <laughs> fluids. Yeah. Fluids or, yeah. Something, uh, yeah. I wish that was a joke. It's not. She, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I've said Simeon's, this on the podcast. Simeon's cat but, has uh, the Despotellus virus. Yeah. My inside. cat has a. That's called CRV. It's a feline respiratory virus, and she's a carrier for it. So she was originally brought over to America from Russia to be a breeder cat, and then they found out she has she's a carrier for this. So like she can't interact with other can't cats. Breeder, she could, yeah, <laughs> yeah, transfer it to them, and then uh, they die. Like it's I don't know, probably not all of them, but I think it's like ten percent. So it's not like worth the risk. So the breeder lady was just like, "You want this broke cat?" And I was like, "Yep." Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I don't mind. Don't mind if I do. Free, <laughs> so you mean, like, I, free I imagine you putting that like up under your hat and just you put it back down. Yeah. Well, thank you. And you just put it up there. Put your hat on your head and you walk away. <laughs> the cat. Yeah. Some old. Yeah. The cat. Just like before. Some... <laughs> before she was twenty pounds. Yeah. I could. Yeah. She's done massive that. now. She's yeah. She's Here a you coon. Soul. She's, I'm, I'm worried she's gonna start using her her thumbs for stuff someday. Ooh. Yeah. Scary. But anyhow. That makes me she's happy. Thumbs. My dog's my she's, dog's happy. I'm happy. Clicking all my hero click styles. No. Uh, well, okay. Well, right on. That's pretty fun. I uh, I'm glad your dog's getting getting an education, getting out, having fun, enjoying its one on one time with you and other dogs, and yeah, getting treats and I'll be able to hopefully someday he'll pass the bar. Ah ah ah! I just hope he gets to the point where I can tell him the dangers of mountain lions in the area. But uh, oh, that's. An ever-present threat, an ever-looming danger here in the Ohio <laughs> here in Omaha, yeah, apparently. We have, yeah. We've, we're up to, like, five sightings with, the, I mean, the, the investigators are closing in, but they, they still have not caught the That's elusive mountain That's what they say. Lion. I don't, yeah. They say it's like, we almost got them. They're like, do you? It seems Just like it's it. still out and about. Start sending um, the... Uh, the interns down into some like storm drains and stuff that's that's what i'm saying use the disposable crew whatever we got here let's get let's get it taken care of uh but right on what made me happy this week i took a trip on down to lincoln my dad came down this weekend so him and my little brother wanted to go hang out and do something and i was like well hey i gotta go to lincoln anyways you guys just want to come with me and we can go to the arcade down there so we did whatever we went to the arcade we had a but daggum blast, Simeon. Let me tell you something. My little brother is a natural at these oh, I saw the wonky picture. Japanese, yeah, getting these plushies. Yeah. So the first plushie I helped him get. So these aren't just a claw machine where you pick it up and you move it. They're okay. weird. Um, I think I might have mentioned these before on the show. But one is like you pick up a uh, ping pong ball and then <laughs> to the right, you pick up the ping pong ball with a claw and you drop it and you try to hit it in this muffin tin that has the little marker, right? That's literally the game. It's not pick up the plushie or pick up like a toy. It's grab a ping pong ball, try to drop it in the cupcake tin that has a little marker, like a sticker on that ball. And if you if it bounces all around, then you just wasted whatever, your dollar. And it's so wonky. There's one where it's like, push the dice over and it has to roll a one. And I'm like, that's a big ask for me to even try to move the big heavy wooden dice it's it's on the six right so if, hopefully if it just slides down the ramp it just stays on a one but what if it doesn't you know like they're so wonky and then the first plushie he got was just this plushie where it's in between two little things we just kind of have to move it so it like falls it's like being suspended by like two little holders and it's like oh it's kind of curious so you just try to get under it with the hook and like lift it up so it falls over it's right in front of the hole, so it just falls into the hole. And so we moved it pretty good, the first one. And so he's like, ah, oh, dang. I guess I have to do another try. And I'm like, now hold on. 
hold on this let me let me show you a little, little trick that i know uh and then i sh just shook the heck out of the machine and it fell down and we got it and hopefully then then we realized there's a camera right above me and we're like all right well let's just pretend that didn't happen and move on so that was pretty fun but then he has like five six other like plushies that he won that day uh me and my dad played some big buck hunter which is just man if I win the lottery, you'll know because I'll have a big buck hunter in my house <laughs> and I'll have like that Terminator Salvation game is also super baller. Oh, yeah. I'll have that in my house, too. Like those something about those games is just so sick. Like Terminator Salvation, say what you will as a movie. That's like one of the best arcade games of all time. It's literally so much fun to play. Oh, my gosh. And big buck hunter just rocks. So, yeah, we had a we had a freaking blast. We were able to give the giveaway, if you guys are unaware of this, which I know you weren't, but we were giving away all this cool Exosword stuff from the OP kit, from the main set that WizKids was like, oh, here, you guys have it to give away. And we were like, awesome, we'd love to give it away. That ended up going to Mikey, who lives in Lincoln. I was able to hand it off to him, and then he was able to open a ton of great stuff from it. He got like... Wow, he got Prime Chase Apoc was Rogue. In the so got, yeah, Chase Apoc Prime was in the brick. Ride. Yeah. Those Prime were the two brick Ugh, things. So good. Plus and others, then he got obviously. Chase, like Annihilation in the Loose Boosters, and mm -hmm. Prime Captain Burton Rogue, which is like so, so dope. So he made out like a bandit. Uh, after our fun little arcade trip, we were like, because it's my family, we're like, we only have to get Krispy Kreme. We have to get donuts now. And I'm like, well, of course we do. Uh, and sure enough, I didn't know. I knew he worked at a Krispy Kreme. I didn't realize it was this one. And he hooked us up with some free, free donuts, which was like so gnarly. So. Big shouts, big shouts, a lot of respect. Thanks for being a real one, Mikey. You the best. So it was pretty awesome. It was an overall real fun day hanging out with my dad and my little bro. But let's go ahead. Let's jump into the podcast. Uh, actually, this week I want to kind of talk about what we played. We did a pretty fun event uh, this Sunday today where it was 500 points and you had to have one tent pole. You had to have one person worth 200 points or more and then nobody else could be worth 200 points or more. Yeah. Um, and Simeon, what did you play? You played a really fun, funky team. I thought yeah. it was pretty fun. Uh, so I was trying to, when I was looking at this build, I was like trying to think of some things without just doing like a single like 400 slash 500 point character and that being it. I was like, what's a figure that I just have not played? And I went downstairs and shuffled through what I have on display, which is usually like stuff that's too expensive to play normally or not in like competitive situations. Uh, and I saw my old house of X apocalypse prime. That's like the super air prime, the horseman one. So he has a 250, a 150 and a hundred point dial. And I tried playing him once at a hundred points because at the beginning of the game, you get to choose four friendly characters that are 50 points or less each. And you give them, uh, one of the, the effects so they can be war pestilence famine or death those are like the the four horsemen obviously uh, is the whole point and so war gives them super strength pestilence gives them poison famine gives them adjacent opposing characters can't be healed and then death gives them exploit pretty cool he also has the behind the scenes trait which a lot of stuff got around then he has celestial tech so a lot of people today were like oh he's not power cosmic he's not cosmic energy and i'm like no he has celestial tech which is almost the same uh, he, so he's protected mind control outwit penetrating and penetrating psychic blast so it's better than normal cosmic energy but right. no willpower which oof. that no willpower is a, is a pretty big bummer it was real rough so For your uh, too, yeah yeah there's a like a lot of times where he just cleared so which is fine um and then on top of that trait he also just has free choose a standard power So like just any standard power. So I was playing him oh, at 250. Hey. So a lot of times I was picking Flurry. He's got a 12 speed charge, 12 attack, 5 damage. Most of the time I was picking Flurry. Sometimes I picked like Exploit or Battle Fury if my opponent had rollouts. And then the thing I never picked was he has, he can also, instead of choosing a standard power, he can also just uh, free choose to be colossal sized. <laughs> And he can use that until your next turn. So you can't even use the willpower What? roll from Colossus. Oh, Size. dang. At the beginning of your next turn, yeah, you lose it. Um, that is and then His last trait is uh, friendly characters with the horseman keyword can use steel energy. So I built a full horseman theme team. So it was originally going to be some of the X of Swords stuff, but I could not find death or war, which 
I know I I think well I know war I have in like a bag at your guys' place. Uh, I'm positive I pulled oh, death from the main yeah. set. I just don't know where he is. Um, but I know I have like that sword, the black bone of Amdwat. Uh, so instead of playing either of those, I played Banshee at 75 points from uh, X Men Rise and Fall. Has the Horseman keyword. Has a rally ability that lets you replace a range attack roll with those five. Uh, other than that, just plain old dude. He's just Pensai with two targets, running shot, like that kind of thing. Not a great use of 75 points, but I wasn't like super worried about it. Uh, and he also can't be one of the horsemen that like Apocalypse names because he's over the 50 oh, point line. This is so sad. Yeah. Next up was the uh, Wolverine from House of X, the Uncommon. So he's a horseman. He's got the tan and yellow suit. Um, he has the adamantium laced bones and mutant healing factor trait, which is toughness, takes a max of three damage from attacks, and then at the beginning of your turn, heal one. So at worst, they can knock him to his last click, but they can never just straight up kill him with one shot. It's not protected pulse wave, but most people don't have like full damage pulse wave. So yeah, most of the time it took at least two, ta- two attacks to knock him down. I was giving him uh, war, so top dial he usually had super strength blades and exploit because of apocalypse giving him super strength so didn't really ever come up but it was like an option i always had uh next up was polaris who is from also from the x-men rise and fall set uh she actually was pretty clutch because her rally ability is free remove a rally die to knock back a character within range and line of fire so that's six squares Ooh, that's cool five squares in a direction of your choice so separating people just like for free because she has a rally die was real cool uh especially when my apocalypse can just pick like flurry and just be next to him and pummel him afterwards uh Closing up the team was Mr. Sinister from X-Men Rise and Fall. He's a rare, so uh, he has, during force construction, you may choose a character on your side li- or on your starting force that is less than or equal to Mr. Sinister's point value to be Mr. Sinister's clone this game. The clone gains all of Mr. Sinister's keywords. Since this is during force constructions, during force construction, uh, that means when establishing theme teams, um, anyone that was copying his keywords was also going to be a horseman, so it was going to always be a horseman theme. So I selected Luke Cage from Avengers 60th. <laughs> this is so wild to me. To, yeah, to be <laughs> Mr. Sinister's clone. Uh, then he has, uh, this never came up, but whenever an opposing character uses uh, team player team ability after resolutions, deal that character one pen damage. Literally never came up. Uh, leadership. Uh mastermind outwit when mr sinister uses leadership or mastermind the clone is considered to be adjacent if it's within four squares of mr sinister this did come up um oh okay luke cage getting to be able to be leadership this was also my only leadership because that prime apocalypse at 250 not a leader no no leader huh? yeah he's empowering people like quite a bit and doing all kinds of stuff giving them steel energy super strength exploit but i'm not like i'm not telling you what to do like you know i'm like leader like if you want you can but like don't i was hoping like you guys had worked that out between like the four of you and i'd just be like behind the scenes Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh but no luke cage so between the avengers team ability and um his attack power which is super strength when he's given a closer range terrain action increase the damage dealt by one so that's in addition to what the terrain would do so he's usually a 12 for 5 when attacking people not always but an 11 for 5 isn't unheard of and then he also just can immediately have an object if he runs through blocking terrain so that is cool it's pretty much at, like when he's on that click, because I'm playing him at 40, I'm playing Sinister at 40. When he's on that click, he's almost always got like five damage. It's, and I was always giving him exploit. I was always making him the uh, exploit dude death. Uh, I also, so that came out to 290, or 490, geez. Came out to 490, and so I threw the Muramasa blade on Apocalypse. Also came up at least once. Uh, I hit with it a few times and had to explain like how 
All right, so I hit you. I rolled like a one on blades. So my it's going to be like my printed minus one. So you're going to take four, but you don't get to use your defense powers for the rest of this turn. Oh, right. So like yeah. the whole rest of this turn, you don't get to use defense powers. Um, and so that was kind of hard to explain. <laughs> At least like once or twice, I had to explain. It could, be a, that. it could be a little tricky, yeah. It could be a little tricky. Yeah, uh, and as I was explaining it, uh, Aaron was like, "Oh man, that sword's actually really like good." And I was like, "Yeah," because like if I have a really high damage, I hope I roll low because I'm just doing my minimum or my my printed damage minus one, which is like fine. Right. Four damage is fine if I'm ignoring your defenses. And if I roll the same, it's like, okay. And if I roll like a six, then it's more damage than what I have printed. So also, okay. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the bulk of the team. Uh, I went one and two. I lost to a gamma clap Hulk and a, oh, uh, War of the realm Spider-Man who makes you roll three dice. I didn't have hardly any support powers on this team. Apocalypse can yeah. pick a power every turn. But that uh, Gamma Clap and Spider-Man team was like, everybody roll three dice. I have three probs. Uh, Hulk also just came up and straight up hit Apocalypse for like seven damage turn two. And I was just like, yikes. I should have picked Mastermind with him. Like, that that would have been so bad. Yeah. Ugh. Mastermind would have been a much better choice uh would have been pretty nice yeah pretty what nice. i was usually picking was like defend giving everyone a 19 but i forgot oh sure. a 19 defense kind of sucks nowadays because it's super easy to hit 14 <sighs> tell so me about it tell me about it printed me. with close combat expert or range combat expert and then avengers team ability i'm at 14 and like a lot of hulks are a 12 with close combat expert like almost I mean, I won't say all of them in modern, but there's a lot in modern that are a 12 with close combat expert and Avengers. Yeah. So if you want to be defensive, if you want your guy to not get hit, you need either like mastermind, shape change, super senses, impervious. You need something that's a rollout because the defense stacks are not going as high as the offense stacks. So no, yeah, no, um, not at all. But it was a real fun team. I really enjoyed finding out that like Mr. Sinister could just cheat a uh, like random person that's like the same points onto a horseman team. So I could have gone with anyone. I went with Luke Cage just because I thought it'd be funny to have Luke that's Cage a real, as like a uh, death. <laughs> oh sure, okay, interesting. A little uh, a little who clone Tyrone type situation going on there. Also the exploit like yeah. The Luke Cage, brother from another mother, uh, clone of, of Sinister is <laughs> of kind Mr. of funny. Sinister. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're like we're like brothers. Like, aren't All you just, British? No, 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 no. We're we're I'll like just, uh, the same. paint a, a tiny red diamond on Luke Cage's forehead and then yeah, there you go. no one will be the wiser. Now it's now it's one of the worst comics ever made. Cool. I also like after playing that Polaris, I mean I, I hate yeah. Red Rally Die, but she is X Men, so she does work with Moira. Um, being able to just six range line of fire, knock someone five squares towards you, kind of insane, kind of super cool. I actually really liked that when I like, when I f put, first put her on the team, I was like, she's sidestep TK. That's what she does. And then when I was actually playing her, I was like, oh, dang, I can, you know, just absolutely remove this person That's from their formation. Up. Oh, geez. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, what I played and... I was basically looking for an excuse to play a team like this for a while because it just every once in a while I get I get the itch to take me back to the good old days of hero clicks and how I used to play and how I used to build and I'm like yeah I got to do it got to do it again and I played a Captain America core team basically it's a team of all just versions of Captain America this is my freaking favorite way to play this surprises nobody my tent pole originally was going to be Spider Supreme but I was just like man I do not want to play him. Like, I do not care whatsoever to play Spider Supreme. He's a quarter Captain America. I don't like his vibe. I don't really care what he does. Um, and so then I realized, oh, it's Golden Age. 
I can play a marriage droid at 200 points and he's just bad, but at least he's <laughs> Captain America. And like, you know, I know he's not, he's machine Smith, but still he's like big old cap. And I like that. I like the way he looks. Um, and his whole special that like, gives him four targets is way better now than it, than it was ever, uh, because he can do close with targets. So it's Even really cool. Even his retail is way um, better. He's a 10 for oh, four yeah. instead of a nine for three. Yeah. Way better. Even though you like, you never really cared if you hit them or not technically, no. but it's like, Oh, I can still can punk you for it'll only be three damage because retail only does three, but still, it's like this is awesome. I love this. Big fan. So that was like super cool. So he's at two hundred. I finally got a play. Shout out Will Holland for getting me my Carnage Captain America like four months ago, four or five months ago. Um, finally got to play Carnage Captain America. I was like, I'm gonna quit being a blind hater and I'm gonna give Legacy Card Hammer Four Cap a, a try. You know. And it came up a few times in the games that he couldn't ignore outdoor blocking. And it bothered me. It bothered me a lot. I didn't let it get to me. It got to me a little bit. But I tried Hammer Floor Captain America. Gave him gave him the good, honest try. Prime Captain America had to be on the team. Um, I haven't played him barely at all. And he's supposed to be, you know, everybody's raving about him online. And I even rave about him a lot, too, that I think he's, like, the perfect version, like, as close to the perfect version of Captain America you could get, like, representing him. I think it's really awesome. Uh, he doesn't have really a shield bounce mechanic, but besides that, he's like, wow, this guy's, like, perfect. Uh, playing Soldier Supreme, he's just fun. 35-point Gwen Merica. Uh, I don't know when I'll ever play this piece not on just an all-cap team, because she's just funky. But uh, I'm one of the players, so I'm playing Gwen. And then 45 points left, we throw on Skinny Steve Rogers and a generic cap LMD. And the team's a lot of fun. Uh, the only bad thing is it's a lot to keep track of. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously a lot of figures, and each one of them that has leadership does something special on their leadership. So I'm just like rolling leaderships in a line, check, double checking the card. Okay, there's a lot of leadership healing. This say, gave the team like prime cap if he removes a token with leadership or willpower, he like heals somebody. Yeah, he can heal anyone, even himself. Uh, Anywhere on the map, just anyone that shares a keyword gets to heal one click for a leadership success, for a willpower success. The Captain America, the Soldier Supreme, gets to heal all adjacent characters on a successful leadership, which is gnarly. And then Hammer of Thor Cap can heal himself two clicks with willpower if he succeeds at willpower, or heal an adjacent character that whoever he removes a token from two clicks if he hits them with leadership. Um, yeah, it was crazy cool and then what's her face gwen can remove it from anyone on the map that shares a keyword with her and then carnage cap gets to load his leadership dice as oh, a blades dice right. yeah which is really yeah we hit leadership on a six one time M majority of the day somehow even though it shouldn't have mattered but yeah it was like a lot of ones twos and threes and i was like come on you're kidding give me a break but when he finally hit the six and we got to just auto blades for six it you know it felt pretty good it felt pretty dang good um, I kept my sideline thematic as well. Even though it was like Silver Age, I could have been like, uh, you know, poo poo pants, and I could have been like Black Vulcan, Brainiac, Black Vulcan, Brainiac, Lex Luthor, uh, Green Arrow. And it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. That's lame. Uh, so the only trouble alert I had was the Atom, because he is on the shoulder of George Washington. And I'm like, that's really funny. This is my patriotic team. We have George Washington on the sideline. We have got to have Agent Coulson for any Captain America to bring him in on a six. Agent Coulson's so good. I love. Just bring in Agent Coulson, who can in-cap shoot you and give you a token, like do you full damage, give you a token. He's also just like another outwit. The team only has one outwit, and like getting him in was super necessary. And then, of course, we got to play Peggy for whenever the first Captain America died. Peggy got to come out, as well as the toughest girl in Brooklyn, Becky Barnes, got to come out, which is a ton of fun. Do you have a Doctor Strange and additional Captain America for your Strange Supreme? Well, I didn't end up playing him. I played uh, Meridroid uh, instead. Yeah, uh, I okay, I okay. would have, I would have, but like I really, you know, Spider Supreme is not. He's just not quite my guy. Soldier Supreme is cool. I wish he had a split. Sadly, he doesn't. I wish Soldier Supreme could split into a Cap and a Strange, but oh, does he not? That. No, he doesn't have that. Yeah, he doesn't oh. have that. They they didn't think of that effect until Batman, I guess, oh, where they're like, oh, Warpool. the duos. Okay. Yeah, he was a warp world, not like a, a split guy. He was, you know, sadly. So, yeah. So, Spider Supreme has it where you can split off to Arachnite, Soldier Supreme, Moon Knight, Spider Man, Doctor Strange, Cap. Um, but, yeah, no, they, they didn't think of the duo splitting slash 
all these people merged splitting uh until like beyond amazing and batman uh team up sadly so but it was like it was a ton of fun i went i went two and one uh, literally because one game was like a uh, 200 point guy 150 point like thanos and it's like man i don't want to i don't really want to attack these people uh I, I'm really bummed that in almost every game you're saying like a 19 defense is getting easier and easier to hit. Yeah, it really is. I had Captain America, Prime Captain America is a 21 from range, right? A 22 if he's in hindering, which he was most of the time when people would shoot at him. They're like, I just got to get rid of him right away. And I'm like, nah, how about you don't? How about you let me play my favorite piece? How's that sound? Uh, he almost died literally right away in every single game. And I was so mad. I was like, I really kind of built this team just to play him. You're really peeving me off here. I will say Carnage uh, Carnage Cap is actually kind of becoming a favorite of mine. He is so fun. The choose within four and line of fire to then just attack from that square where you don't have to have like line of fire to the target. Just the square is so cool. So I've like super enjoyed attacking that way. That kind of feels like a fun shield mechanic almost for Carnage Cap. I really enjoy it. So the fact that you can like quake exploit you know, and like not see half the targets is like so cool. So I'm really, I'm really enjoying Carnage Cap for that. He's super fun. So yeah, I was hoping that I would end the day being like, wow, Prime Captain America. He's my Captain America for sure. But I couldn't because I only got to play him in one game. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I will say the strange role on Soldier Supreme almost never happens. So that's a bummer. And then Carnage Cap instantly went up in my book. He was a ton of fun to play. And then Hammer of Thor Cap, you know what? The essence of the character is still there. At least if at least he shoots through elevated. I do wish his healing leadership and willpower was different, but him shooting through elevated characters and hindering is good enough. There was a few times where there was outdoor blocking in the way, and I'm like, just saying, the old version wouldn't have cared about <laughs> outdoor blocking. I'm just saying, just saying. So it was like it was like ah it sucks that's that's in the way and it's stopping me from getting the shot. But uh, besides right. that, if it makes you feel better, still... the Wolverine I was playing had improved movement hindering. So oh geez, that's funny. I was just like ah yeah, that's that's something. It's it's not well no it is nothing but I mean it's not not nothing it's it is printed on the card <laughs> as something. I uh, do have a but big yeah, dot so... on my card yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> but it was still it was still a fun team. It makes me just be like, man, I don't know. I don't know. Like I was like, after playing all this competitive, being able to just be like, yeah, I'm playing to me the most purest sense of the game. I loved it. I missed it. I was like, this is so great. It's literally literally the most fun to play this game is, you know, yeah. how you like to play it. So listen Honestly, right in. That's that's my favorite way to play the game. Play all I caps. I wouldn't be able to play half these yeah. figures if it was competitive. I mean, not even. Oh uh, right, yeah. I no, legitimately, exactly. like, I tried to make I mean, Prime Apocalypse competitive for a second this, at like hundred uh, points, but I'd never okay. play any of these figures if I was playing competitively, other than maybe Luke Cage and like Pulp. Dude, my this five hundred point team couldn't beat any three hundred modern team. Oh, <laughs> like no. you know, period. Yeah. Really, but all right, let's uh, let's jump into some news really quick. I mean, we talked about pretty much everything that was showed off at Gen Con, but they do have some cool news that was posted just a few days ago, which is kick off 2024 with two exciting monthly organized play programs. I'm not going to get into too many of the comments, but let's just look at this. Monthly organized play, three-figure monthly organized play is back. Let's get excited, folks. Like That's oh, yeah. awesome. This is a good step. Yeah, it's not WKOs or whatever, but guys, this is a really good step in supporting in-store play and getting people jazzed about playing Hero Hooks. This is really also, awesome. Also, I was real worried. Wonder Woman 80th rotates. I lose two of the best like Green Lanterns. But <laughs> maybe, just maybe... I know, right? With we'll, we'll, get into, we'll get into that here in a second. So... First up is the DC Gotham Villains Monthly Organized. These are both DC. Okay. Uh, brand new sculpt and dial for the devious DA turned crime boss Two-Face. So we have a new 
Two Face, Sculpton Dial, and brand new dials for Joker and the Penguin. These are the notorious, and not notorious, excuse me, Batman team up versions of Joker and Penguin, as well as a more villainous terror to the table with a t- puzzling Riddler legacy card. So we get another mm. legacy card for Riddler, which is really interesting. So we already have the Yet mission point Riddler. slosh. Uh, I'm curious if the other Rid- Riddler will be the Joker's wild it's Riddler. That so many people. I, that's what I think, right? Like it has be to at this be. point. Like I, they, it could be a different one. Like honestly, I'm a huge fan of the mechanic that came with uh, Justice League Unlimited, or was it Batman animated series? Batman animated series. Batman animated series. Like, if you guess odd or even, yeah, I was a huge that's fan why, of yeah. that mechanic. But I don't think that figure deserves a legacy. It's a cool figure. It's a cool design. I think the the sculpt wise Joker's Wild is way better. Oh, absolutely! It's way. I mean, the the box and it's way cooler. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. The clue box. The next one is going to be the Young Justice organized play kit, brand new sculpt and dial for former Green Arrow Psychic Arsenal. Which this looks so cool yeah. with his robot arm turned gun. Like Arsenal is like a cool character. I wish he had his ball cap. I I don't know yeah. this. One, he like just, he just got kind of the rocking the domino mask and uh, real short buzz cut yeah. hair here, almost like totally clean shaven. This guy, uh, so we get a brand new arsenal, which looks cool, and just arsenal's a cool character, so that's awesome. And then a new dial for Wonder Girl and Teen Lantern. Oh man, I I don't. I'm so excited can to see we what get, Teen does. Can we get? Oh, a- yes. Yes. 20 point teen lantern please no no please no we need cheaper no green lanterns with sidestep well, tk free yeah barrier. please Can teen lantern and sidestep tk free barrier still have the prop from a barrier uh yeah then be like 15 points instead you just have to make her playable i mean we have this genestro <laughs> core guy we yeah. gotta have a teen lantern that's also cheap uh, geez, please don't do that. Yes, I want her to be like cheap, but I feel you know. so. I haven't felt this way since back when like the uh, the triple pack Venom Spider Man, whatever it was like Spider Man with the Venom symbiote, Agent Venom, and then classic like Eddie Brock Venom. Everybody and their like mom came out to try and win those. I feel oh, like yeah, competitive dude. players, depending on the dial, I don't. I don't know what Teen Lantern's going to do, but if it's anywhere in like the realm of what the previous one did for points and power set, I think everyone's coming out for that one. Like there she might be, be there literally... might be blood in the streets for that Teen Lantern. <laughs> I think so, right? Like she could do literally nothing, but if she was twenty points, it's like, oh, gotta, we gotta get her, we yeah. gotta go get her. Literally like twenty points of Earthbound neutralized <laughs> six B willpower, yeah, something garbage, and it's like, well. She's cheaper than Legacy GL. She's so also a 20-point construct dropper, so I need it. That's all, that's literally all that matters. Yeah, yeah. it's like Teen Lancer could do anything but be expensive point-wise, and people are going to love her. Um, and then we also get a Wonder Girl team-up card. So we, we weren't getting a lot of team-up cards. We are getting like, oh, here's a mystery card. Here's a Legacy card. So now Wonder Girl's getting a team-up card. That's kind of fun. Maybe it adds to like this specific version of the Teen Titans. I assume it's going to be a... Is Young Justice a keyword or is it just Teen Titans? I can't ever remember. I if Young, Young Justice, Justice is a keyword, is a keyword yeah. then maybe... Okay, so maybe it's a Young Justice keyword team up or something. So that'd be cool. Um, and then the end of this post was something that's really neat here. But shout out to the Hero Host community and local stores that support the game. Let us know what your favorite store has been up to lately and share some pictures of players enjoying the game. Send us a message for a chance to be featured in our local spotlight. This is super cool. Get out there. Hey, when you're enjoying your Hero Host games today... Take a selfie with you and the guy across the table from you enjoying hero clicks or maybe so, someone getting a big role. You know, it'd be kind of fun. Not counting the three new ones. How many unique sculpts do you think Young Justice Keyword has, period, mm. like in, in all of hero clicks history? I really don't know how old Young Justice is. I'm guessing, by the way, you said it, that it's like literally Wonder Woman is how old Young Young Justice is. So is my Wonder guess. Woman. Yeah. Wonder is Woman it? Idiot <laughs> is how, how old so, Young Justice is. Who is that? That's Flash. That's Wonder Girl. Maybe the other Wonder Girl. And then Teen Lantern. So I'm going to guess like seven unique sculpts for Young Justice. It is three unique sculpts. Oh, no. Wonder Girl oh. is one. Uh, okay. Teen Lantern is another one. Okay. Miss Martian is the oh, third. Oh, sure. And then both of the Miss Martians from the starter 
like technically have two separate dials uh. that you can play. So in modern, there's a total of uh, if you played them all at top dial, that's 150, 250, 290 points of currently in modern Young Justice characters. You until, know what? Until the set. That's that's a 300 point team with emo mod. If I've ever seen one, right? Very very excited for seeing more of these. These are going to be in 2024. I hope we get more than two a year. Uh, yeah. I hope it ends up being how it used to be, where it was like almost one. Was it like one a month? Was it one every other month? It was like a lot, I yeah. want to say. One, I mean, one a month or one every other. When I started, it definitely felt like it was like one a month. Like, cause yeah. you would you would play like week one, you'd play for this figure. Week two, you'd play for the next one. Week three, you'd play for like the last one. And then like next month, you'd have like a whole new set of them, I swear. Uh, maybe that's not right, but that's that's how I feel like it was. Uh, another thing, we don't know the pricing, how much these are costing stores, but we do know oh, is sure. that it's going to be, it's not going to be one of each like the last OP kits with, that they sent out were. So these are going to come with, I think it was three or four. So oh nice, very like cool, that. very very exciting that like they're getting back to like you know first and second. And then like fellowship or however your store would like to do it, I guess. Okay, right on. So yeah, I'm I'm stoked for these. It's gonna be awesome. But that's all we have for news. So unless there's anything else you want to say, we can just go ahead and move on. Uh since I wasn't here last week, I'm gonna say congrats to Alex Mater. Oh yeah, that's real cool. There you go. It real is super cool. Super duper cool that uh, he. I mean, he's just risen through the ranks so quickly and so efficiently and not just risen through the ramp but it's like it's like young skywalker striking down master yoda you know he oh. he destroyed his uh like the apprentice beat the master you know maybe you like mean, more like, apt like obi-wan kenobi like, uh, darth vader versus obi-wan kenobi because yoda yeah, never gets yeah. struck that. not to sound like a super nerd yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's Very a better good. sith metaphor where it's you know I don't know any. Sith. He beat he I beat guess... Lucas, and Lucas is the main judge of their venue. <laughs> that's, yeah, he beat Lucas we're... just like how Obi Wan Kenobi was able to beat Lucas when it came to Lucas film. Tickets. Yeah. Uh, no, I no, it's just really cool. Um, super proud of the guy. I haven't played against him a whole lot, but I've seen him around for a couple years and seen him make the jump from you know top eights lower top eights maybe qualifying in like regional stuff to being a national champ is pretty huge pretty cool pretty it's pretty awesome and yeah love and respect alex he he balled out he did awesome yeah absolutely uh but that's yeah that's all i really got i could go through all my gen con stuff but i don't feel like it it was it's in the past now (laughs) it's old news fair enough Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, So let's go ahead, jump into an old uh, segment we used to do a lot we haven't done in a very long time. This is Generic Gallery. Why should you care? Keywords. 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 So why should you care? Keywords. It's only game. Why do you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, past, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but you know, you get it. What is Generic Gallery for those that don't know? Well, we started this way before Pulp and Theme were a thing, back when Pulp was called Popper and Theme didn't exist. Theme was uh, back, it was three uh, uses of probability control. What normal yeah, people wow. played, yeah. Yeah, like, what normal people played. Normal casual uh, It was like the average game. And yeah. I don't... I want to say it was around when generic themes were the same as named themes. Or maybe after, it was slightly so before. After Wonder Woman 80th. After right? Wonder Woman yeah. 80th, yeah. So it was either slightly before Wonder Woman 80th or just after. I want to say it was slightly before. But it we started being like, hey, a lot of people don't play generic theme. And I yeah. think it was before Wonder Woman, actually, now that I say this. like Not, not enough people play generic themes. So this is all about building with a generic keyword in mind. Now that there really is no generic and named, but it's come on, it's still generic. We we know, we know. A group of we're not we're not the detectives. Spoiler, um, you're the Batman family or something. But anyways, generic galleries saying we choose a generic keyword. We each build a 
team around it. It used to be like a 300 modern type build and a 400 like silver or fun build. Now we are doing a theme and a pulp build. Very, very fitting, I would say, with the current team building and yeah. alternate ways of playing the game. Just uh, But it's basically, yeah. Basing it off the keyword, one's already going to be themed no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's taking place of what our old modern age would have been essentially right uh it has a few other restrictions built in but then yeah the the pulp one is also like a theme team if you're into playing theme and you're playing a pulp setting but you don't want to like quote unquote break the bank right so that's what we did here it's pulp and it's theme and the generic gallery keyword this week is detective we are cracking cases we're looking at clues we're trying to solve some mysteries here we got that's right it's some freaking detective theme teams that we've built the detective keyword has been one simian that has just gotten about let me check yeah a thousand times better <laughs> this year in than it literally ever sets. has been yeah. in the last like yeah three Batman sets team up spider-man and avenger 60th for sure um, yeah huge boost so it's fun. I always like it when a keyword gets better because there was always like a fine line where it's like a few years ago, you're like, man, you're going to play a celebrity team. Are you just kidding me? And now it's like, oh, yeah, celebrity is a legit keyword. You know, like it feels like soldier, mystical, monster, scientist. Like these are like the main generic keywords that are so I generic. Mean, so many people fit them. Martial artist. You know, it's like, way too long ago. But like eight years ago, a scientist theme team was garbage. And I know that's like... It was a long time ago before <laughs> you think scientist was bad. It's comparing you know I mean? apples like, and tires there. But like it, it, <laughs> eight years ago was was a time where like scientist was like you were paying 70 points for like an outwit perplex. Right. Yeah. It was bad. It was You weren't getting, you know, Iron Inquisitor and Doom Supreme and Jeez. whatever else. Like there wasn't Every that other kind of Doom stuff. figure and like Flash and Scary and Iron Man and all this other jazz. And it's like, what in the world? So since, you know, we were looking at keywords, I'm not going to name the other keyword we almost chose because it was like, wow, this is just horrible. Uh, so we'll wait maybe a few more sets to see if that keyword gets better. Um, for right now, we're going to focus on Detective Simeon. And when we do Generic Gallery, we like to do two other mini segments, and that is the hidden gem segment where you choose a figure that you think was overlooked in a set or maybe it's went to the wayside and you're like oh no wait actually you should have double checked this it's actually a really cool really good figure and this is how i'm making it work and there's also the value corner segment which is all about finding a figure that's very very cheap that is very utility for you to use and yeah yeah that's really about I, it it's a very value, nice cheap way of using it going forward value for points value is probably yeah. just always going to be attached to pull because uh, more than likely that's our value set but i mean maybe we'll mix it up occasionally but uh yeah i do i do have the value figure and i do yes. have the pulp build tell me tell me about your pulp detective all Dan right Simeon. so starting us off is one of my favorite uh pieces i haven't built in pulp with this guy yet but it's the martian manhunter from batman team up i'm ah. playing him at 75 points as i think you have to kind of uh he has the whole special speed power on his first click thing that is detective john jones denver pd opposing characters can't target martian manhunter unless he has made an attack this game and then at the beginning of your turn you may deal martian manhunter one unavoidable damage so he has an activation click he's only a nine attack for one damage top click he has willpower uh but the whole can't be the target of an attack this game pretty pretty cool uh, it goes really well with his perplex, his like utility of ignoring characters and blocking. So even if they try and base him, try and poison him, something like that, he can just like move away. Um, and yeah, so you always get to be able to just trigger him on the turn that you want and have an 11 for four right off the bat. But uh, his trait is when Martian Manhunter uses the Outsiders team ability, because he has Outsiders and PD, and targets an opposing character, that character can't be given free actions until your next turn. So this is great at locking down characters with multiple free actions that trigger any free actions that you don't want, or just straight up like a character that uh, potentially gets to like a 14 attack using outsiders on them, and they oh, can't geez. you know retaliate against you. Very cool. I uh, 
And like this isn't he doesn't lose this when he goes to click two. Uh, he just loses the ability to not be targeted or attacked. Um, so yeah, I I like outsiders in pulp. I don't think I've built with outsiders in pulp yet, but uh, after looking at you know what some of the characters can do, you know Hawkeye with like a, a fourteen because Avengers team ability and bats. It's like well maybe maybe <laughs> we keep that a twelve. Just maybe keep it within reason because my defenses don't go much higher than 18 if they even go to 18. So I'd sure like for you to need at least a six. Uh, It'd be next nice. up, uh, on this, this detective pulp team, it's old Fred Jones. Uh, he does. Oh, yeah, he does work. I've put him on a lot of teams because he is a uh, passenger four traded sidestep tk leadership defend so that's all he is but like he's very simple and he does it really well if you need a tk he's there if you need to move nine squares seven and then with a sidestep carrying four people he's there uh on a smaller map having your taxi have sidestep is real clutch being able to move over to like other people is real big because you all have to start in like a little congo line Having an 18 defend when you're past dream four, pretty solid. And then also just leadership, always solid. He ends up with uh, support and force blast at the end, but don't really care about that. It's mostly getting the team into position for an economical 50 points. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and then next up is old Multiple Man from Rise and Fall. I'm playing him at 40 points. So he isn't a standard character. And then he... If he starts the game on his click 9, he has a zero point value for all effects. That click 9 is plasticity, in cap, 16 defense, 2 damage with empower. He's a 10 attack. So if you get a few of those click 9 dudes out there, uh, you can not only tie people down with plasticity, but also ramp up some damage on your other characters. I've played this guy at all point values, uh, all both of them, uh, multiple times, and I really enjoy him. The next thing is that he's got uh, a trait that says he takes a maximum of two damage from attacks. Whenever he takes damage during your opponent's turn, after resolutions, you generate a 007 multiple man on click nine, and then damage taken is the result of or is the result after effects that reduce or otherwise affect damage are applied. So that's just saying he takes a max of two damage. So uh, if they're dishing you out four damage you're going to reduce it by one to three, but then you're still going to take a max of two. If they're dealing two pen damage, you're going to take a max of two. You know, It's essentially saying okay. like it's not a max of two after the reducers or before the reducers. It's a max of two after the reducers, which is toughness on all of his clicks. Uh, and then he's also protected pulse wave on that. So taking a max of two means that you have to at least hit him three times, which means that I get at least three of his little dupes and that's a bunch of empowers. I really, I think in pulp, especially having empower is solid, but then these dupes also have underworld team ability. They also have the X-Men team ability. So they come into come in handy in a few different other situations. And then finally rounding out the team is uh, this is the the value quarter pick. Ooh, quarter. okay. So okay. when I get done describing this character, go ahead and feel free to to guess. to guess how much this character's worth. So mm. Uh, mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil it. It's Misty Knight. Uh, so ah uh, well yeah. I probably would have gotten it. I think either way. Yeah. There's only two characters that do this. So number one is her trait, consulting detective. When establishing theme teams, choose a friendly character. The chosen character gains the detective keyword, and then the Special damage power, she has her whole dial, is leadership and then free. Choose one to last this turn. Close combat expert and empower, or enhancement, and range combat expert. I love this character because for 30 points, you like she's not usually attacking too often. She's a four range, two targets, but not usually attacking. It's more so I'm getting an empower or enhancement whenever I need it. Depending on the turn, I can pick which one I want, which one I'm going to benefit more for, from. So if Martian Manhunter is taking a shot, instead of being an 11 for 4, he might be an 11 for 5. Um, if I have a bunch of multiple mans out and I put her on her close combat expert in power 
uh, if I pick that, then suddenly they all have three printed damage and or three damage instead of two damage. And so they're actually able to like crack certain defenses and stuff. She has the defender's team ability. She has two clicks of super strength. So if you do get in a situation where you need to move some barriers, she can also do that. Uh, she can also just destroy them because she has two printed damage with either close combat expert or range combat expert. So she can at least be up to three damage and destroy blocking as well. But yeah, uh, that's all she really does. But 30 point leadership empower enhancement swappable pretty solid w what do you think old misty knight here the uncommon is worth calder man so an uncommon they like to put those guys i'm gonna guess is the latest set the set just came well i shouldn't say just came out but it's the newest it's the newest set here i'll hmm. also say with the advent of pulp some some cur has gone up in price is it is we it have a, i'm gonna we have a manifold. Rare manifold is going for like thirty bucks. <laughs> that is true. I'm gonna say for it being one of the, the the most recent set with pulp probably going up in price, and also man, the enhancement power choice, the detective like the detective sheet is so. I'm gonna say two dollars. It seems high for a. I, I mean, arguably a a spot on like in my opinion kind of dollar amount. A dollar twenty five. A buck twenty five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think right she's, on. Just like Professor X and Magneto were probably like the two non-generic uncommons that I wanted the most out of Rise and Fall, I think this Misty Knight is probably my go-to pick for an uncommon from Avenger 60th. Um, there's also like Hulks and stuff that you could uh, pick, but no, I, I think if you're building with Pulp and you want a dete like detective keyword sheet, even if you don't, for 30 points... An empower enhancement swappable kind of combo that has like stealth and stuff. She's real solid. And anyone keeping track at home is like, oh, he's at 195 points. Oh, that's right, because I gave the tech of keyword to the rare Hulk from Avengers 60th. There, oh my Who, gosh. with the Avengers team ability and Why? close combat expert, can be a 14 for five, pick up a terrain object, be a 14 for six. Oh Why? baby! What in the world, Why? Detective Hulk, what are you doing? Just absolutely destroying this is, people. This is nutty. <laughs> I love Simeon. I absolutely love this figure. If you uh, carry Misty Knight along for the ride, well, you can't carry her, but if uh, she tags along for the ride and you give Hulk an empower, all on his lone stone with Misty Knight, he's hitting fourteen for seven quite often. Is what his like stats are going to be? Okay. Uh, okay. Pretty insane. Uh, he also heals when he destroys blocking terrain and stuff. Like he's not the prime one. He's not doing like the insane, you know, ten point heal. But like if he gets damaged, he can heal up a bit. And then he has willpower and his defense powers all have protected outwit. He's an insane uh, pulp pick. I I would say this guy had competitive potential if it wasn't for the fact that he's 100 points and most competitive things are like 50 um, oh geez <laughs> yeah if yeah. he was half point cost people would be paying attention to him in like modern 300 but no detective hulk here i love building with this guy and i think you know martian manhunter he outsiders somebody uh you put misty knight into position you have hulk charge in that's the one thing is like hulk speed real low so you're gonna have to have fred tk and then hulk okay, charge sure. in uh misty knight probably just like walk there if anything maybe a multiple man uh duplicate gets like put there but yeah this this hulk is easily hitting for seven most turns um he's pretty insane and then with this team there's even a click where he could hit for eight with flurry so oh boy <laughs> quite the consulting detective you've brought on yeah here, so. <laughs> Old Bruce Goodness. Banner, uh, not he is gray, so he is Joe Fixit color scheme. Uh, but I'm judging from the sculpt, that's not what they were going for. Not I quite. Believe, the, yeah, this is the cheaper to print type guy, gray Hulk yeah, or whatever. He's, he's a little more rage fueled. Yeah, uh, but no, the team comes in five points short of being 300 solid. But uh, I really think Martian Manhunter, whether you're outsidering their big threat if they have a hulk i know if they had a hulk i'd sure want him to not be able to modify combat values um 
same with like that's pretty you fair. Know, that's pretty fair, darn. Most of the the, the range combat expert kind of pieces, uh, and then if they have like, oh, I like ESD or combat reflexes, you get rid of that too. You say Ooh, they can't use true. free actions, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Fred being able to kind of shift the team around a little bit. Also for for pulp, Fred's got a dial that's like not easy to deal with. He's not just like one shotable. Right, he's got a deep dial. Yeah, he's he's tough to KO. I'm not gonna focus on him, but if I was going to, no, I would literally have to get the Hulk up to seven damage to one shot. Yeah, or six damage but you're just like, man, shot. he's got an 18 defense the entire. Come on, yeah. dude, you know, like it's it is annoying. It's like that's you know, a lot to deal with. So and then not yeah. cool. Then you got little tie up multiple man stuff, which I like it. I really like. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so I'm building the theme detective theme here so in the theme format i only get six sideline slots oh yeah sorry i only get three you only get three sideline slots this is the biggest this is the biggest thing that was the thing um, i was i was gonna say uh misty knight so, is able to cheat somebody with the like right to the detective because um, and this is pulp but on theme you don't get to do that yeah you have to have the key you have to have the keyword printed i only get three sideline slots um and then I think that's about it for theme, but it is Silver Age, so I can pull some older stuff, which is neat. So, really quickly, just to jump into the sideline, Scrappy Doo is there. He kind of feels like he has to be for Detective. I feel like if you want to just run another mystery, sure. Um, so I have String of Cat Burglaries. It's just good. It's the whole we modify attack and damage plus one when targeting a character that's equipped. That's that's our suspect three. And to rack up clues, it's literally just hit somebody uh while you occupy hindering train it's not very hard so stream cat burglars is just solid and then i'm i'm using unlocking raven spellbook because i feel like this team is very aggressive and it makes a lot of attacks but it only has one uh so you get one every time you gain a clue token sorry <laughs> that's silly you get uh, a clue token every time you hit one or more opposing characters and it only has a case closed at nine which is each opposing character can only be given one free action during their turn. It's really good, but again, it's only in effect at nine. So you have to just hit nine attacks. However, however, now hear me out here. We can hit nine attacks turn one if everything goes super duper correctly. So yeah, we'll, we'll just, let's get into it, shall we? Uh, Prime slot right away is being ate up by microphone Batman. He is just so good. He honestly, he isn't utilized insanely well in this team. He doesn't really need to be. He just kind of has to, let me check this. Oh yeah, exist to make your opponent have to play <laughs> around him. He is a, a borderline map wide effect that I can target as many people as I want all over the place because I, I want to. So he's quite yeah, nuts. Just I also think with the ability to slap some elevated under him, it makes him a lot better in certain maps by just being able to do that now with terrain. So he's really cool. Next up, we have the commissioner, because why not? This team's a detective. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Cool. There's rookie. This team is going to be like, wow, Caller just chose a bunch of expensive figures. You're kind of right. Uh, I'm allowed to. It's theme. So no pulpy business here. Commissioner's just great. He gets us the rookie, gets a great attacker. He also gets us a leadership and an outwit, which is really solid. Next up, a less evil version of the commissioner. We have Commissioner Gordo. Now, I like him a lot, especially on this, because he has telekinesis, and then PK is free, but only to target another character that shares a keyword with him. Well, heck, it's a detective theme team. I'll take a five points cheaper Venom Magneto. Don't mind if I do. So... He also has Barrier. He also has Leadership. So old Commissioner Gordo here is pretty awesome with the double TK. I like him a lot. Ironically, I found out that Polaris also has the detective keyword. Oh. So if for some reason you wanted to get rid of somebody else on this team and then have two double TK people on this, you could. I don't know why she's a detective, but she is. She's part um, of uh, uh, geez, the what's... Mutant... No, Jamie Madrix's is uh, oh, X Factor. His... X Factor Detective oh, okay, Agency. Sure. Then that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's probably the only reason. I I wouldn't consider her a detective personally, but she was part sure. of that like team. That makes sense. Then jumping into some more. Now these are our big attackers. This is who we're TKing up. First one, Daphne. Daphne is just awesome. Every time you add a clue token, friendly characters modify their attack plus one with Mystery Ink until your next turn. So that's Daphne. And then, spoiler alert, Shaggy. So Daphne is also just a precision strike 
in cap, uh, triple target charge, super senses, probability control, team player piece. She's awesome. She also has free make an attack when you target an opposing character monster. Mystical keyword, fairly common keywords, actually. She also has sidestep force blast. And then, of course, the whole perplex trait to target someone who she knocked back this turn, which is really good. So Daphne is a force to be reckoned with. Next up, Shaggy, also a force to be reckoned with, who also has precision strike. He also has super senses. He has shape change. He can destroy blocking terrain, and he moves through characters, which is kind of nuts. When a clue token is added for Shaggy, you modify your damage plus one for all Mystery Ink characters, which is really, really good. Uh, same elaborate trap. And then he has charge, and use it in hits. If a hit character has monster or mystical, he can use flurry as free. Otherwise, he just gets to also make an attack. So he, he has, like... Flurry without it being flurry. Uh, so you can make three attacks if it's a monster or mystical, or he still gets to just make two attacks if he uses charge and he hits, which is nuts. Heck yeah. Next up, another figure who I was like, why are you a detective? Maybe you know Simeon. Venom Wolverine, <laughs> uh, X23 here, is also a detective. Really? Yeah. Like, wow. for what reason? You know what I mean? Like, why? Uh, but she Now, is, that one I'm genuinely um, like... Mm. Genuinely I don't curious. know yeah. what she was investigating. I really don't. Um, but she has it. Venom Wolverine's nuts. If you don't know what she does, uh, she has plasticity, super senses, the whole can't be targeted. She has giant... So she, first off, 12 attack, 12 speed, 18 defense, combat reflexes, charge, blades, 3 damage, exploit. So she's moving 6 squares and hitting, right? No, she has giant reach 2, buddy. She can move 6, hit out to 8 there. She also has free if venom wolverine has two action tokens make a close attack yeah here's something pretty simple uh move up and down or move slightly forward if you want to first turn get her a second token tk her out charge hit you gets a second token boom gets to hit you again so if we get two attacks with daphne we get two attacks with venom wolverine we get three attacks with shaggy uh that is going to put us at seven and then batman one, two, three, four. Okay we, okay, we can't make nine attacks in a turn, but it's a lot. Oh, no, wait. Just kidding. We have the octopus arms on Venom Wolverine, because why not? Or we could give these to Shaggy. I literally don't care. Um, <laughs> or we could give them Waldo arms. Or we could give them Waldo arms. Who cares? Whatever. If you find the getting a double giant reach to redundant, but it also gives her improved movement, whatever. I don't care. But okay, so now Venom Wolverine comes across. She's hitting you three times, which is stupid and nuts, and I love it. So, Yeah. Her with Waldo arms and Silver Age equipment is really, really good. It's really, really cool. Um, and she's a detective because why wouldn't she be? So this is also just really fun in the the TK, my dude's up, Alpha Strike, try to hit you. So yeah, that's really cool. Oh, and you're thinking, well, we have to get to Calder's uh, hidden gem. I'm not going to lie. Just finding out that Venom Wolverine had detective was kind of a hidden gem for me, but she's obviously a known figure, so she doesn't really qualify. But it's just wild to me that she's a detective. Um, no, we're going to go to a different detective. We're going to go, Simeon, to a simpler time. Wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge. Hmm. Uh, this character has a fun ability. And I think in the world of Frogman, move up, force blast, give him the shot gauntlets, knock people back. Frogman's pretty expensive. This person isn't expensive. And I do think a Silver Age, not modern, but a Silver Age... Frogman alternative, still 35 points, still has super senses, not as deep of a dial, only four clicks. But instead of leap climb, they have phasing teleport. When blank uses it after resolutions, he can use force blast at no cost. So still, that's still really strong. It's an eight speed move with phasing through everything to then free force blast. Yes, it's not as many knockbacks as Frogman, but sand? for not being as ex it is sand. Okay, Simeon. yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's sand. It's like. Um, Phasing knockback. Yeah, that's the only character I remember that can do that. Yeah, so I like Sand a lot here. I like to just run up phasing knockback, and then maybe next turn we, we tie you up. Sand can just shoot you. A little, little RCE action, a little 10 for 2, so 11 for 3 RCE. Got Justice Society, who, which, guess what? You're thinking, ah, oh, Calder, how are we going to use Sand's cool once per turn for all characters to trait? If they use JSA to replace defense value, that character can also use Super Senses. Well, guess what, buddy? Daphne and Shaggy are wild card. They already have super senses, Ooh. though. But they are wild card. Uh, so since Daphne they only can has share 17, defenses, yeah. they can share defense. Yeah. So you can get Shans, uh, Sans 18 to Daphne, which is really, really nice. Um, 
And that's that's about it. Shaggy already has an 18, but somewhere in the middle, he's he's got a couple of 17s in there, which is pretty cool. So he'll be able to help out there a little bit. Oh, and guess what? Yeah, that's right, buddy. Wolverine, who has an 18 defense but doesn't have super senses, also has team player. I don't know why. Why is that <laughs> Wolverine of so many things? But yeah, she is also team player. So she's also 17 for a lot of her dial, but not top. But yeah, giving out an 18 and then being like, oh, here's super senses. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's pretty good, I think. So yeah, Sand, I think Sand's a pretty sick piece. I think just for the giving out super senses, which is already annoying power with people that have wild card, which it, there's a lot of it nowadays with team player. And then also being able to do their own Force Blast, who we're giving him shot gauntlets as well. Of course, we are on this team. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's my detective theme. I think it's really fun. I think it's really strong. Um, and I think it makes a good use of Sand, who is a not necessarily a value figure, but a cheaper alternative to Frogman that also does some extra things. I really like the sharing the defend and giving out. Like, an 18 is fine. And then also just giving out Super Senses is, like, so strong, I think. So, yeah. yeah. Honestly, didn't know half those characters were detective. So other than like, yeah, Mystery like who e, are you people? Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, other than Mr. Inky, I was like, dang, like, uh, sand. Yeah. Like sand. I used to play that figure back in the day. Awesome. Sculpt. Uh, really cool. It figure. is really cool. Yeah. Didn't know that was a detective. I mean, I, I, I know, didn't know it right? had any keywords at all other than JSA. Um, and then, yeah, Venom Wolverine being detective is mind boggling, but yeah, that's, actually a very solid team like i know i think so it's got fun. all the things that it needs and like you said an insane amount of attacks uh and yeah just throw on some like extra equipment if you want even more yeah yeah like honestly i could see people being like you know what we don't need batman which is wild to think like you know microphone yeah. batman feels a little slapped on oh uh, maybe do some more equipment <laughs> grab some other stuff honestly that prime that kind of like ruled the meta for like seven months <laughs> seems kind of unnecessary in this i build. know right it's weird we to say that find a better prime uh, uh, but yeah it's kind of wild but turn, honestly yeah. yeah so yeah the team's the team's cool so like always at the end of these we'll say hey if you tried out simian or eyes generic gallery right into the show let us know if you build a detective team with you know generic gallery type esque stuff in mind, send it into the show at our email at dialhforheroes at gmail dot com. We'd love to see what your detective theme does and or is. But uh, all right, that's generic gallery. Man, I miss doing generic gallery. We gotta do we gotta do this more than every yeah. five years unless we did it. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens. These come from Malcolm Rush over on Facebook. He's got a couple of questions about convention exclusives. Simeon, you want to give me your best, worst, and favorite Heroclix convention exclusives of all time? Yeah, so the worst convention exclusive of all time. This might be a little cheating, but the worst of all time, I'm going to say, were the ID cards. The convention exclusive ID cards. Not only were ID cards just like, eh, like annoying to have to collect and pay $50 for this non really physical like item that is just like laying there but having convention exclusive ones made it even worse to collect even worse to like you know um when the the not wanted posters the uh like the dc like arkham file ones came out it was like it was cool because we didn't have any of the villains on like standby for dc but at the same time, it was like, I really don't know when I would ever call a Joker in. Or I did end up calling in Harvey Dent, Two-Face. But oh, that's pretty cool. outside of that one team, that one specific team, I don't know when I would ever do like a, a Two-Face call in. That kind of thing. Um, so that was my worst. My favorite, I think, is Supreme Intelligence. I think that's just a super Ooh. cool sculpt. Um, very utility dial. You can play either the resource or the actual main dial, which is like really cool where you can just target from anywhere on the map kind of thing. Uh, and then the best, I have to say it's like OG Galactus. I don't know how it's anything okay. other than, than okay. old OG Galactus. That's a good list. I think, I think we were thinking pretty similarly for some of them. So for my worst, I said Felix Faust. 
and Ooh, I was in the same mindset of you where I'm true, like, literally, true. how could this be not because he was so abusable and not fun to play against, right? Like he was horrible. Um, I was like, this guy's just he's the worst. My favorites. I went with Earth X Captain America. He he sh- ushered in that era where if you remember when these ones were shown, it was a picture of just sculpts. It was like giant man with the big plane wing with the tank with Earth X cap and then whatever the other ones were that year. And I was just like, whoa, this is like the best year for Connelly's ever. Uh, and I was like so excited to get him and play him. And he was like a ton of fun. I think like uh, and he has uh, such a such a solid sculpt. Spirit of Vengeance, Red Skull, Venom, and then I want to say was, it was like was Samurai. Samurai Gwen was like there. I want to say oh, that yeah, like probably twenty eighteen to twenty seventeen ish year somewhere in there. Uh, so it had to go Earth X Cap. He instantly made me be like, okay, well I've got to read all of Earth X, and I was like, wow, this storyline freaking rocks. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely him. Still my favorite. So, my favorite leadership when I'm running bystanders. Oh, dude. Just clear the whole board. It's yeah. so good. Take it's a token so awesome. off from like up to 150 points of characters. Like, oh, all of these yeah. are zero points? Well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, well, well, well. So, yeah, that's so awesome. And then the best, and I went with this one. I do probably agree that, yeah, OG Galactus is probably the best. I think you're probably right there. Um, I went with one that filled me with so much hope and joy um that didn't last long mind you but still filled me with so much hope and joy and and that was the ultimate warrior seeing a never before known about wwe figure being released as a convention exclusive i was like whoa so you're saying there's a chance and just lit that fire inside me uh an excitement and it was so far the only convention exclusive that I have cosplayed technically as the ultimate lawyer. Uh, and that was a ton of fun back in Gen Con 2021. So I, I had a special, special place in my heart for the ultimate warrior. And he's the best in my eyes, at least. He's also pretty fun. He's unique. He's cool. Malcolm then asks, what makes an ex- a Heroclix uh, con exclusive. I'm taking this as the what like what makes them feel like a Heroclix con ex- I don't think he's like asking so what makes them a con exclusive and it's like well yeah. they're at well, a convention yeah. so the they're a con exclusive. exclusive. Uh, yeah. I think he's more so saying the what's the vibe that this, this piece has or, or what should a convention exclusive uh, exude as far as thematicness or choice of character goes what do you think simeon uh i think first and foremost is that it's um not necessarily fitting any kind of sub theme that has been released that year so uh we're getting like uatu battle armor like the the watcher battle armor we that's part of like the the package for the graceland hotel so we know he's being released that's at this point like a two-year-old sub theme, if you want to even yeah, consider that a sub theme, it is. Um, <clears throat> and that sub theme being like animated uh, Marvel, like MCU stuff. Um, so it's one. It's something that's not necessarily the mainstream set sub themes. Sometimes it is, but more more than not, it's like off base, like a uh, Thanos copter didn't fit into any set that was coming out at the time. <laughs> no, it didn't. Yeah. But like super cool. I th- I feel like that was like early ideas of like iconics where they were like how funny would it be to do the Thanos? Oh, movie? sure. Yeah, um, I see what you mean. But that's that's kind of what like convention exclusives were, is like a one-off kind of iconics where it's just, you know, a figure in a box. Uh and then the other thing is like they typically get like a super rare or higher kind of treatment of flavor. So like some some rares also hit this level, uh, Deathstroke being one for sure. There's a oh, few yeah. rares that like, uh, gosh, Kazar, he hits probably like this flavor level, but like convention exclusives definitely feel like they're a rarer piece just because of like flavor text and ability alone. It's not always a good thing. Like uh, the Mermaid Patman isn't like stellar. But his flavor does right. stuff that no other Batman does, which is cool. Uh, and I, yeah, I think those are like the two main points. Um, I, it doesn't always have to be outside of like sub themes that we've seen, but I think it definitely helps them fill in gaps 
like stuff they wanted to make or maybe you know like oh i we couldn't fit this earth x character in this set so here he is kind of thing right or uh, yeah. i guess it's like yeah uh, the best example would be war of the realms cap he wasn't in the main set oh right sure and now we're getting one that's a very definitive version of very, War of the Realms cap. If he had been a chase so. in that set, I probably would have bought more of that set. Um, yeah, honestly. And I, you know what? It's funny you say that. That whole comic would have been a solid chase theme. So it's still, we only have Cap and Spider Man from that, like, War of the Realms little, I think it's like one or two issue little mini comic where they go to save Thor and Ice, Ice giant land Jot- jotunheim is that yeah. that ice giant land? Okay. i believe so so like we still need like iron fist luke cage and wolverine all riding pegasus pegasus pegasi like pegasi. or yeah. or just you know there like spider-man's not riding his pegasus but sure he's at least there and it's from that comic so we still need yeah we need like iron fest with the twin blades and Oh boy, what did the cage? He had like a big old hammer that wasn't like a Thor hammer, but it was like a big old hammer. And then Wolverine, don't you want something from the arsenal? No, bub, I've got the, my arsenal inside of me. And he pops his claws, and he's like, "My oh, bones man. are metal." <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. But my like that would have been a great. Uru. <laughs> think how cool the chase team that would have been. All of them on Pegasus's Pegasi, and like riding. Like yeah. that would have been such a sick chase theme it's the only way we'll ever get a punisher van uh with the goats strapped to the front oh my gosh if we ever if we ever get that which i at this point i highly doubt it but that's the only way we ever would if we were that would be such an awesome yeah (laughs) um i agree with you for what makes a convention exclusive figure for the most part i do like when they fill out a theme that's really cool um, and I do think they should be an alternate take off of a like a main character, or they should be a very popular side character. So like to me, that's like Gwenpool, where it's like, oh, okay, I don't really know where we throw Gwenpool in, but she's a very popular side-ish character, newer character. Let's get her made, and let's kind of like take some liberties with her, do her justice. I think they could have done way more wacky stuff with her for sure, but that's just like as an example. Like, where do we put? obnoxio the clown you know i okay sure make him a con you know uh for some reason we can't put these three wonder women in wonder woman make them i like the team packs thing i like the fantastic thors the wonder woman wonder woman it's like okay that's that's fine i hope they do more team packs so if they have like a, a team that doesn't necessarily fit in a set or it's like we couldn't get them in the set or it's just like whatever make these like teams that's really cool like i like the idea of the fantastic four is like the idea of the wonder woman legacy that's like really neat so alternate takes on people like mermaid batman like shoots rainbow superman like pegasus cap uh like old man logan like that was an iconic one when he came out because like wow this is like one one of the coolest best storylines marvel's ever made and holy smokes he doesn't necessarily just fit into an x-men set but uh here he is as a con exclusive so yeah Next question, Malcolm asks, is for 2024 HeroClix Convention exclusives, what do you want WizKids to make? This is, a, this is a loaded one. This is a loaded question here. Yeah. Um, so only because we know we're getting DC's chases, and according to the set list, he's not part of it. I'd really like a Constantine from the DC storyline. I've already said this okay. before, but Constantine like collects a bunch of mystical artifacts because Trigon is like... You know, no one's dying. Everyone's just getting infected with the virus. So Trigon's like, no one's coming to my hell. Like, why? Oh, this is annoying. I guess I'll just destroy the whole Earth. And Constantine finds out that this is like Trigon's plan. So he starts collecting all this stuff. And then he has this big face off with him. It's pretty cool. It's, I mean, it's only like a few pages long, but it's pretty cool. Um, another one is uh, the last comic that Beta Ray Bill was in that I am aware of as a standalone like series where it's like uh, i think five or six issues and uh he goes to so stormbreaker is destroyed so he goes to hell h-e-l to fight surter to get the twilight sword because he needs a mystical weapon because he just wants to look normal he's tired of looking like android horse face man so since he doesn't have Stormbreaker anymore, he needs like a different mystical weapon to like 
get himself there again. And sure. so he goes there, scuttlebutt, like turns into like a transformer. But yeah, Beta Ray Bill with the storm or the not Stormbreaker, but with a Twilight Sword would be cool. And then Scuttlebutt that can transform or is just like giant mecha cannon gun, like ship sized gun is pretty cool. I'd really Ooh. like that. Okay. And yeah. I those you are, have shown me that three. panel where he's like that insanely massive gun. Yeah, that would be scourge. It really has cool, like a tear like, rolling down his face where he's like, it's yeah. so beautiful. That would be such an awesome like two by four, like you know, a blackbird size like thing for like oh, a little yeah. tiny scourge at the end. Just like it's just that long of a gun. That would be hilarious. And that reminds me that like usually convention exclusives have like, oh, that's our big base figure for the year, whether it be the Supreme Intelligence, whether it be like Galactus, Master Mold. We don't it's it must have been out of our minds because we don't really have one this year. There's not a, a two by two or greater no convention got exclusive a, a coming out this year. It's and a bit of a bummer. Yeah, old peanut caps the biggest we are where we're getting for right yeah. now. But uh or twinkie, so for, I guess. Yeah, I don't. Oh man, will he be peanut or Twinkie based? That ooh, that's ooh. a good question. When? Ooh man, I now I'm really curious. Ooh, will that be a, a Twinkie based? That's wild. That's yeah. wild. When in okay, we'll see. Was he made? Because yeah, when, that'll, yeah, that'll tell us if he was made before yeah. or designed or before wheels. Uh, wheels. Before they were like, yeah, make them all fully rounded. Make them the Twinkie base. Man, now you've really rocked my world. I'm like, is he going to... Not that it's that important, but it's like, is he going to be a peanut or a Twinkie? What in the world? Uh, okay. My picks for 2024 are some obviously biased picks, but I want them all the same. Fear itself, Captain America with all of the shotguns and rifles and or at the very least, uh, Captain America with Mjolnir from Fear itself. It's one of the most iconic moments ever for Captain America, in my opinion, and I love it, and I'd love it to be made, and I'll say that till the day I die. It's the only figure, the only figure I want that Whiskey hasn't made yet. Uh, second is, if we're going to do these team box sets, I got a team for you, Kids. How about the Captain America core box set? This is American Dream, Isaiah Bradley's great, 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 great grandson from the future, who's president, U.S. agent, Bucky Cap, and then the World War II Captain America with the Triangle Shield. So this is like literally second mission, World War II Captain America. So this was a Captain America Corps was an amazing leaf, like super fun storyline. It predates all these. Wow. We're a team of spider people. We're a team of whatever people uh, predates a lot of those in the fact that the universes will just collapse in on themselves if a world doesn't have Captain America. And that's the storyline. And it's really fun to see these characters uh, who have all either never met or are just related to the ideology of the Star Spangled Man of the Plan and then have to interact, work together to beat this alternate universe version of the Avengers slash uh, the like Team America, whatever they're called, um, these older warped Captain America villains. So they're just, it'd be a fun team to get as a box set. And I would really like it because we have never gotten an American dream. We've never gotten Isaiah Bradley's. I really feel bad for getting his name, but he's like great, 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 crazy future grandson. Uh, we've gotten a U.S. agent. We've gotten a World War II Captain America, albeit pretty far ago we got one, which was Secret Wars. And that was the first World War II Captain America with the Triangle Shield since Infinity Challenge. So we could use a few more Triangle Shield ones. Um, and we haven't gotten Bucky Cap in like literally 10 years. So unless he's in wheels... Uh, it's going to be 11 years uh, next year. So I feel bad. I feel poor Bucky. He's been Winter Soldier for too long. Make us a Bucky cap. And then as far as two by twos go, I I know the DC set because they said it was going to be something new that they've never done. So it's probably not a lantern theme. But if this would maybe work with the set, I am still pushing hard to make the two by two lantern vehicles where it is Kyle Rayner and a mech. Don Stewart with like a crane, Guy Gardner with like a Mustang or a monster truck, and then Hal Jordan in like a green like fighter jet, right? Like those would be so dope. I would love to see those for like the main 2814 lanterns with some two by twos. Any of those. Any of those are cool. They said it's be never so dope. been something they've done. They've I know. never done so, a main set, non storyline organized play lantern set right see right yeah so there's a chance we've done They've war never, of light never done a never done booster 
that's primarily yeah, lantern that's based, big. right? Yeah, see exactly. Yeah, there's, there's so, a lot of stuff. Ah, uh, ah, uh, <laughs> please, Whiskets, please. So that's what I want. I want that so bad. Um, but also a, a Capcore esque box, but for the lanterns would also be really cool. Just get updated versions of all of the lanterns, which would be really fun. Number four. Best way to get Hero Hooks cons if you can't make it to any of the different comic conventions. Jimmy? Uh, buy them. If you, yep. if you can't make it to the convention, you uh, pay what people are asking you to pay. Or if you aren't comfortable with that, you wait a couple years or months or whatever until they are being released more often. I will say uh, in the case of like Death Metal Wonder Woman, um, Superman Prime, certain figures like that. They never became more readily available. I mean, Death Metal Wonder Woman is going to be this year because she's being re-released. She'll be at Worlds again, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, after last year, like, I mean, she was hard to come by. I don't know where she was released, and I know in 2019 when Superman Prime was released, I got one, I immediately sold it because it was going for an insane amount, and then I was never able to find one again for not an insane amount. So, like, it just always was at that high price and that's another figure that potentially will be like re-released but yeah i from 2019 i waited four years to potentially oh, find a figure maybe oh and it, no. i don't i don't even like the dial i've played against it i don't think it's great the thing is it's a really cool sculpt it's insane it amount of like flame effect kind of stuff um and that's the only real reason why i want it I've never even read the storyline. I get it. He sun dipped for 10 billion years or something, something, something. Don't care. Not interested. But cool effect. And so, yeah. Uh, I like the sculpt. That's a figure that I, I had at one point and I wanted to get back. And it was just quite literally without paying an arm and a leg impossible. Like yeah. I, I would have had to have paid more than what I sold it for at the time. Because I sold it at like... I sold it for under like what the market was going for. And I knew I did that, but I was like, eh, like I'm still making way more. Like I won it. So like I'm making instant profit because I didn't really oh, pay right. for entry yeah. kind of thing. But yeah, that's one that uh, has just been hard to come by. I still never got a uh, old man Logan. I still don't know where those are. So uh, that kind of gets us into our next question, but I agree with you. I'm um, sorry. Either you have to have a friend there who's willing to buy them for you, and he'll maybe even ask another five bucks or something, or yeah, buy them off eBay, Facebook, whatever. Like it sucks, but people yeah. haven't grasped this concept, and I feel bad for Hero Clicks players. And I feel I don't. I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, but in the action figure community, in the Funko Pop community, in literally everything that has a convention that's exclusive, in the comic book variant cover community, it's rewarding people that took time off from work, that took time to travel, that spent all this money. It's rewarding them with all of that with here's an exclusive thing you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. It sucks for the people at home, but remember this, you didn't do anything to deserve to be able to easily get it. Especially, and yeah, you have to pay if, the price. If you're going Sorry, to... But like, it's kind of true. <laughs> if you're going to like be like, oh, I hate scalpers, like people that go to conventions and stand in line and get these figures and then like sell it for like double like the cost it's like i don't necessarily agree with like the cost that people set it at but at the same time that is the opposite of scalping that is nowhere it, near what scalping is nope scalping yep. is like i go online and i buy up every single ticket for a concert and then i resell them because i've made artificial scarcity that's scalping going to a convention and then selling stuff to people that weren't going to be there to buy them that's not scalping i mean it it's would not. be if was kids let you buy literally like you could go up and be like, I want every case of, you know, this figure that you have and they sell it all to you, but they don't. Do oh, that. sure. I mean, they, no. they've had limits on these figures since since at least 2019. I don't know, maybe even longer. But yeah, yeah, they put limits on how many you can buy per day. And so it's not scalping. It is like sometimes an insane increase in price. But at the end of the day. You didn't decide to go there. If you don't want to pay that price, then you just have to wait. And like, I used to do that. I never got a convention exclusive piece until like 2018 or 2017. <laughs> like I would just, you know, wait till them, they dropped insanely low in price. And like, I, I never had a Felix Faust until WizKids had him for sale uh, in 2019 for like five bucks or whatever it was. So 
there's plenty of convention exclusives I've skipped because I wasn't willing to pay like the secondary or third party whatever market price for it. So, yeah. Yep. That's that's just what happens. Yeah. I don't know. Just I don't know. I don't know how to explain it's... it better than that. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, the last question is: What is your white whale for your convention exclusives that you're still trying to get? And you mentioned you still don't have Old Man Logan. Yeah, still don't have the uh, Old Man Logan, the original convention exclusive where he's got like cap shield, and then also yeah, Superman Prime. Superman Prime more so because like I won it at one point, and it just like part of me is like I deserve to have that. Uh, it doesn't look any better than like the Phoenix Force or anything, but it's yeah, still sure. it's still kind of pretty, and I'm still just like. I won that. <laughs> like, I don't even, it was like some side event in 2019. I don't even remember what it was, but I shouldn't be proud that I won it, but I am still a little proud that I won Superman Prime. Heck yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm right there with you though. Old Man Logan is still a figure I want. And honestly, with him being released with a few different sales that WizKids had on their store, I'm hoping to be able to get one here soon. And then Agent Venom is also one that I've wanted for oh, forever because yeah. this is really cool where he's jumping over the sandbag and then his tendril has a gun and is shooting you. Yeah. Uh, it's so hilarious. So cool. So, yeah. So I really like Agent Venom and I really like Old Man Logan. And they're just, again, they were these characters that were unique or something at the time. And it's like, okay. They later got booster releases and I own those ones. But, man, I want to own their first Connolly versions because those are so yeah. cool. Yeah. Especially, yeah, Old Man Logan, the booster version, not nearly as cool of a sculpt. I think power set-wise, probably just as good, if not better. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but sculpt-wise, yeah, the one that he's, like, he's holding Cap Shield, it's like he's, like, mid-fight with Red Skull, which is super cool. So I dig it. So that is all of our listener questions, and subsequently, pretty much our show for the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you had a good time. If you want to support Dial H for Hero Clicks, make sure you go over to patreon.com slash Dial H podcast, or I believe it's just Dial H. We're not Dial H for Hero Clicks on our Dial H or Dial H podcast. So go ahead and check that out over there and support us. If you do five bucks, you get access to the Discord. You get five entries into our monthly giveaway. We're always giving away some really cool stuff. It'll be, guess what, some convention exclusives this coming month. And definitely after World, we're going to be giving away a ton of convention exclusives there as well. But make sure to check those out, as well as you get access to videos that I've specifically just made for Patreon members that are really fun. You get access to our Discord, which is huge. We've had people say, I get more out of your paid Discord than I do other hero clicks free discords so that meant a lot to us we won't say who said it or what they're talking about but just you know keep that in mind so yeah our community is awesome we have a lot of great people in our discord they're really fun we also play some hero clicks games from time to time we play some bad samaritan the hero clicks guessing game that we like to do and that one is always a blast and you can come on you can win more chances to like win cool stuff and get yeah. prizes we also have really fun action tokens you can get if you support us on patreon but if you don't want to support us that way then you can support us in a non-financial direct way anyways and that is by subscribing to the youtube channel hitting that bell notification making sure you're liking and commenting and all those videos Videos, or leaving us a review on Spotify, Podbean, iTunes, or wherever you listen to the podcast. Yeah, you can also, if you don't want to, you don't want to pay us money. You can support us by supporting those that support us. So you can use code Dial Five at Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find the latest, the greatest HeroClix singles and sealed products. And using code Dial Five will get you five percent off. Or you can go and shop at shop.wizkids.com. And use code dial h10 dial h10 one of them has an h one of them has a five you gotta listen back to figure out which is which but yeah if you use that code you will get 10 percent off on most hero clicks orders i don't think it works for iconics i don't know if it works for the play at home kits not completely sure on that but pretty sure it doesn't work on iconics and it won't work on the upcoming scott porter figure whenever he gets reposted re-released um we've only had one variation posted so far so it won't work on those but otherwise if you're buying a brick to get a brick exclusive that's the place to do it and like always happy trails so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now
Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like, 100? That's how numbers work. Over how they, six how people work? think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Canada. It's not Canada. Yeah, my bones are metal. Are you kidding?